Hello, welcome back to Bryson's Gaming. My name is Ben, and today we're going to continue on Susan 2.0. So, last time I had a whole bunch of stuff happened. Um, let's see, we uh, signed off on a few tax acts to help prop up our economy a little bit. So, we managed to go from minus 7 to minus 4, which is hopefully a good thing. I mean, our uh, little growth line is finally slanting ever so slightly up. Then, we also signed off on Military Parade, rejected a visit from the CSP, as well as attended the Trial of the Century with the... Uh, Tarkin's soul getting committed for crimes against humanity and a whole bunch of other stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, pick it up here. We got, looks like just two newspaper articles. I don't see any reports. There's also a codex update, which my guess is probably just Colonel Soul. Yep. Let's see here. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. There we go. 1957, he's put on trial for crimes against the Sorge people by the wishes of President Rain. And convicted in charge. Uh, that's charged him with lifetime imprisonment, but all right, he's sentenced to life in prison, which, I mean, he's an old man, probably won't be there for very long, but still, it's better than nothing. But, uh, yeah, we got two newspaper articles here, so first up, from the Holster Post. Sham Soul Trial Ends Republic. Say goodbye to the swordland you thought you knew. By ordering the trial of Colonel Tarkin Soul and supporting the court's verdict of life in prison, President Anton Rain has taken a wrecking ball to Sorge history. A few among us do not remember Colonel Sol fondly as the father of our constitution and our republic. Uh, yet Rain and his dummy court have chosen to treat this great man as a common criminal, stripping him of his dignity and sentencing him to live out the rest of his days in a dank cell at Antel Rock. We at the whole sword post weep at what has become of our proud country and hope that President Rain faces retribution for his heinous acts. Nice, that's some good hyperbolic nonsense there. I love it. And from the radical, bye bye Soul Era. We're excited that Swordland finally has a president who follows through on his promises, especially when those promises involve the imprisonment of dictator and criminal Tarkin Soul. Yes, following months of buildup, the Soul trial has resulted in a guilty verdict and a sentence of life in Ansel Rock for the so-called Father of Our Republic. It's a fitting end for the man who spent his presidency consolidating his own power and fortune while cruelly imprisoning distance and committing xenophobic acts. Congratulations to Rain for achieving the near impossible and finally bringing an end to the dark days of the Soul Era. Coolio. All right, so I guess it means it's time to head to Onarka for an election speech. The sun was starting to peek through the blinds of my suite in the Grand Chariot Hotel in Onarka. I hadn't slept at all that night. I was too busy thinking about how I'd rally my party's conservative base in today's election kickoff. I was just pulling on my clothes, and two sharp, soft, sharp knocks came at the door. It was, it was Lucien. Good morning, sir. Uh, hope you brought coffee. Lucien unclasped his briefcase and took out a small disc shaped device. After scanning the room with it, he gave a satisfied nod. It's about your investigation into the Oligarchs. As you know, the police failed to shut up any, ev any evidence on Master Kronti, but there's been a very interesting update regarding Mr. Tusk. Lucien pulled out a folder and opened it. The anti corruption police have looked further into Walter Tusk's foreign ties and found some very unsettling information. One of his corporation's subsidiaries is directly involved in smuggling and selling Robergian KA-74 in Sotland. Alright, that's that's cool. I haven't seen that before. Well, let's go with that one. Ah, that traitor. This is treason on the highest level. There's no doubt Tusk must be punished. Would you like to go forth with, with his arrest and trial, sir? Yes, I hope he suffers in jail. Lucien nodded smoothly. As you wish, I'll make the necessary calls immediately. Now that that's settled, I'll let you prepare for your rally. I almost forgot, the Archpriest of Deer couldn't be present today, but wanted to relay a message of support to you and your family. What do you say? It's going to be that same terrible Toto joke. I bless the reins down in Anrika. Lucien left the room. I finished putting on my tie and reread my notes for the morning speech. A few hours later, I was waiting in the wings at the North Sword Auditorium in Anarka. In the audience were several thousand of my conservative supporters. And behind the podium hung a giant or er, hung a sword flag and a giant banner that read Um We'll go with that one. Victory is close. Anarka Mayor Curtin Les gave a short introductory speech. It was hard to forget how the Benfi event went down.
Everyone cheered as I walked on stage. Though Mayor Curtin Les was now part of the opposition as a member of the NFP, it seemed most of Anarch was still on my side. Gloria gave a short speech introducing me. Then it was my turn. I stepped behind the podium and took a big, uh, deep breath. Let's see. Show this one. Sons and Daughters of Swordland. Uh, hmm. That one seems a little more diplomatic. In the past three and a half years, I've seen our country tested again and again. Let's see. Let's try to talk ourselves up here a little bit more. Yet the Reign Administration stands strong, ready to lead Swordland to greatness once more. Yeah, that sounds good. Together, we'll get the economic crisis under control. Let's see. Honestly, that sounds pretty good. It's a little more flowery language. Under my presidency, we've enjoyed unprecedented harmony. I look forward to presiding over the implementation of my much-awaited constitutional reforms. That sounds like a good one there. And honestly, since uh, the news is probably going to break about Tusk soon, we're going to hit the corporations. And I remain committed to tamp uh, stamping out the corruption that has plagued Swordish politics for too long. Ah, oh, the wrong one. Well, oh well, that's fine. Thunder's applause erupted. Swordland has changed, but the USP remains as strong as ever. I promise you, there's no way we can lose. I definitely don't believe that, but that sounds like the right way to talk up the base. Let's go that one. I and Vice President Tory shall lead Swordland to a bright new era. A roar shook the hall. Um, hmm. Go with this one, so it's not quite as obvious what we're doing. We will form a broad coalition of supporters to make sure morning finally comes. A morgno vescore. When the audience enthusiastically finished the saying, a streamer shot out of cannons behind me. My re-election campaign had finally begun. I stepped down from the podium. Alright, well, I clicked the wrong answer. Well, I don't know if it's the wrong answer, but it's not the one I meant to, but I don't think that'll make a difference because a that speech seems like it went pretty well and b i think we're in enough trouble as is with the economy although it apparently just bounced up another one here so that's pretty sweet um wow there's a whole bunch of things just popped up too so let's just start with the codex why not let's see business walter sus just saying he got arrested yep 1957, he's arrested for aiding drug operations and smuggling or burning weapons to Swordland, being held in Antel Rock Prison. Fantastic. Connections. Let's see, there's an update in the factions, apparently. Oh, Marcel Caranti is now the, uh, the head of the Heart of Swordland. Cool. All right. Oop, there's probably another codex entry I missed somewhere. Ah, just an update on the anti-corruption police. Just talking about his Walter Tusk and his foreign ties. Cool beans. All right. Let's see. I don't see anything else in here, so I don't know why that's a little dot, but whatever. And then we go to the overview economy. We have planned economy as a policy, which seems weird. So I thought we've had that full time, but okay. And then let's see. Well, I've got a couple green things here. The tax efficient economy, production increase. Very nice. Okay. That probably explains why our uh, budget went up a little bit. If we've got some, uh, yeah, increased production. Nice. All right. Well, might not be in quite as bad a shape as I thought here. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go through reports first, then we'll hit the news articles. So, heading to Connery at here. Swordish Navy prepares for naval drill amid rising regional tensions. In response to the increasing regional military tensions, the Swordish Navy, stationed in the port city of Conrad, is preparing for a large-scale naval drill. The planned exercises are aimed at honing the readiness of the naval forces and showcasing Swordland's military strength. 
These proactive measures signal Sorlin's commitment to maintaining regional stability and national security. Cool. And let's see, from the ATO, first long-range bomber's deployment, a, a defining moment. The ATO's announcement on the development and operational deployment of the first long-range bombers has marked a significant milestone in its military capabilities. These state-of-the-art aircraft, designed with advanced radar evading technology, now extend ATO strike reach from western Mercopa to eastern Mercopa, northern Xena, and eastern Anrakan Archipelago. This strategic advantage not only underlines ATO's robust defensive posture, but solidifies the Alliance's air power projection, standing as a testament to its advanced aerial warfare capabilities. Uh, furthermore, the deployment of these bombers serves as a deterrent to potential adversaries, showcasing ATO's readiness to counteract any offensive actions that threaten this collective security. The initiative sends a strong message to the international community about ATO's dedication to maintaining peace and stability in its areas of influence. Interesting. From the CSP, CSP announces Universal Minority Rights Convention. The CSP has instituted the groundbreaking Universal Minority Rights Convention, a forward-thinking initiative aimed at protecting the rights of minority groups within and outside the borders of the CSP nations. The convention signifies a notable shift in the Alliance's human rights mandate, emphasizing principles of equal, uh, equal opportunity, social justice, and inclusivity. Designed to challenge and transform the status quo, the convention encourages other nations to uphold these principles, aiming to counter nationalist tendencies that threaten social harmony. The con uh, convention also underscores the CSP's commitment to fostering a diverse, inclusive society that respects and celebrates the unique contributions of every individual, regardless of ethnic, cultural, or social backgrounds. That's pretty cool. And this should be the last one here from Lockhaven. Swordish Navy conducts drills amid rising tensions. The Swordish Navy in Lockhaven has initiated a series of military drills in light escalating regional tensions. These exercises are designed to test the Navy's readiness to respond to potential threats and to maintain maritime security in the region. The drills also demonstrate Swordland's commitment to maintaining peace and stability within its waters. Cool. Alright, we got two newspaper articles here. First up from the Lockhaven Times. Red Youth and Young Swords Fight. The Red Youth and Young Swords were once again involved in a large-scale fight. This time, the issue was the vandalism of a soul statue in Lockhaven. Yesterday night, according to this Young Swords member who wishes to stay anonymous, said that he had seen Red Youth members put on a clan, or put a clan wig and nose on the soul statue at the city center. On the other hand, an anonymous Red Youth member denied the claims. Both sides seem to have their own versions of the story, with no evidence from either side. What doesn't require evidence, however, is the injured 14 people lying in hospitals. We just wish that one day they'll be able to go past their differences and make peace with each other. Interesting. And from the Radical, Young Swords Oppress British Protesters. When is it enough? How long can we stand tolerant of the brutality of this fascist organization? Bernard Circus had fought for his country, for the rights of every sword. In return, he got a bullet from this nationalistic group. Right now, the same group is beating and chasing away peaceful British protesters only because they are not originally sword. Still, the administration hasn't lifted a finger. Is this the democracy we fought for a long time ago? Is this the democratic values that we got after going through the Civil War? Interesting. Alright. Well, I guess it's time to head back to Holsor for briefing on the current economic situation. Which, yeah, it's not great, but I mean, it's trending up. We've gone from minus 7 to minus 3 within the last uh, like churn here, so maybe it's not quite as bad as I thought. I arrived at the Ministry of Economy and proceeded upstairs. An assistant waiting by the door to the meeting room took my jacket. I opened the door and entered the largest boardroom in the building. Simon was sitting alone with a glass of water and his documents laid out before him. He stood up when I entered and approached me. After a quick handshake, I took a seat. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. A knock was heard on the door and Glory entered the room. Apologies, I got held up. Did you start yet? Mrs. Vice President, no, not yet. Now that everyone is here, let's begin. Now, as you all know, we're here to review the economic progress we've made over the past term and decide how to proceed. I'll brief you quickly on what we've done so far, just as a refresher. Very well, let's hear it. He gathered the documents in, in the pile in front of him and adjusted his glasses. From the pile, he produced two booklets and handed them to us. Our extra focus on the economy has resulted in some small-scale positive growth. The extra resources have been a boon to my ministry. It will be great if we followed up on this focus during the next term. Let's take a deep dive into the details now. Please turn to page 5. I uh, turn to page 5. Let's start off with our economy plan. I am glad to say that we are on track for, with our intention for a planned economy. 
and most of our decisions so far have been pretty consistent. Thank you for your efforts, Simon. Indeed, good job, Mr. Hull. Well, thank you, you're too kind. Let's move on with the report. If I were to describe what we've done so far, I would say this is very close to the full command economic system. Please turn to page 16. I turn to page 16, titled Status of Trade and the Effects of Foreign Policy. I am happy to say that our trade has increased since the beginning of our term. We are on the right path. More trade means more vibrant economy, which means more unbridled economic development. For better or worse, Sorla is becoming quite reliant on foreign economy, er, economies. Now, it is shameful that a great country like Sullivan has to rely on other countries. We need to become self-reliant as soon as possible. The globalization is at our doorstep, whether we like it or not. Uh, let's go with that one. We need to aim for a more balanced approach. Well, we shall have to carefully consider this matter during our second term. Please turn to page 17. Uh, turn to page 17. In our attempt to repair Sorlin's economic system, we've mostly gone against the wishes of big businesses in favor of the quest of sort of citizens. And this caused us to take on some losses in order to make the people happy. Thankfully, living standards are steadily increasing. We've been receiving fewer and fewer complaints about our welfare systems. Good. Keeping citizens happy is integral to keeping Sorlin stable. Yeah, exactly. Some of our industries have also been knocked down on their knees by recent taxations. The demand for these goods has decreased drastically, which led to businesses in these industries being shut down. Some people are calling the government out for infringing on their personal liberty. Apparently, some even filed lawsuits saying the taxes violate their human dignity. Their lawyers argued for them that they need it for mental health treatment. Now, turn to page 34. Ah, uh, turn to page 34. The production in our country has nearly doubled since the start of our administration. It's a great success. I couldn't have asked for more. Good work. That's excellent news. Something built on to the next gen. Teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, makes it happen. Moving on to logistics. We have an infrastructure problem, and the economy won't truly flourish unless we solve it. We need to make new roads and improve the existing ones. People and businesses alike have been complaining. Smoother commutes, easier access, and faster delivery times help everyone out. We are very close to the end. I want to talk about a few numbers. Please turn to page 57. I have prepared a chart. Our inflation rate is currently at an amazing 2%, down from 10%. It's the lowest sword has ever seen. The sword's friend's value has been largely maintained, and consumer prices have been stabilized. Which means that sword citizens are happier. Ah, good. We'll need all the help we can for the election. Agreed. Mr. President, do you have any questions so far? Uh, what's our debt situation? Our debt is at 428 billion rand, close to four, uh, 427 billion rand at the beginning of our term. Ah, uh, that's not bad. Basically, it hasn't budged from where we started. I would still consider this a success as we inherited a recession. We essentially prevented an economic, uh, economic collapse. How are we doing with unemployment? The unemployment rate remains steady at 16%. The stagnation is mostly due to lack of investments in average economic planning. Cool. Well, what are the latest numbers on our GDP? Our current GDP is at 314 billion rand, not much more than 310 we had at the beginning of our term. As per the latest stats, the economy has remained at a similar level over the past four years. In short, our economic capacity has not changed much at all. Oh, well, that's all the questions I had. Very well. I want to quickly highlight our budget expenditure. My numbers indicate that overall we've been fairly balanced in spending our government budget. A balanced budget, or a balanced approach is good. However, we should forget that money is not spent. Uh, wait, we should not. We should forget that money that is not spent is just pieces of paper. There we go. Now, going into the elections and hopefully a second term, we need to decide on a way forward. One thing is clear: we need a bigger budget. We shouldn't start next year with a budget deficit. What should we do, Mr. President? Any ideas? Um. Let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but I think... 
think we're going to go and do it. We'll take an international loan from the MFI. Uh, this will pose quite a risk to the reputation for administration, but it can be done. And I'll get right on after this meeting. Now that that's out of the way. During our first term, we faced many challenges in the midst of a recession. We've worked hard to fight against the odds, but we couldn't accomplish much. You may have surmised from the data I've given you that we've not yet been able to end the recession. In fact, you'd be correct. But given the quagmire we inherited, the situation could be much worse. Eh, we've done all we could. Now's the time to look to the future and try to fix our mistakes. With a team like this, we will, I'm sure of it. Nothing is my predecessor, Mr. Vecchen, but he doesn't exactly strike me as an economic mastermind. Things should run a lot more smoothly going forward. Yeah, we'll get through this together. That's all for our meeting today. Thank you for coming. The meeting was first. I hurried to the cafeteria to get a cup of coffee. Alright, I mean... Yeah, that could have gone a lot worse. I don't know. I mean, it's not uh, not the greatest economic situation, but I expected things to go much, much worse uh, after those economic sanctions. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I think we'd be sitting, like, right at zero right now. Like, even without getting that loan, I think we'd be still sitting at nice, nice zero. But that's okay. Well... We'll make do. Got to deal with what we've been given here. All right, we've got a ton of reports here. Jeez. And overview. So let's check that first. So economic situation, international MFI loan. Okay, yeah. So it provided some relief, but people are concerned about uh, possible impacts on our global influence because of it. But that's okay. I'm not too, too, too worried about it. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I'm probably going to, um, like, split away from the USP and form my own party anyway, so I don't know if that's going to make as much of a difference. But who knows? We'll see. Anyway, like I said, there's a ton of reports, so let's, uh, let's get moving on these here. So, oh, jeez, yeah, there's 11 of them. Nice. <laughs> All right, anyway, from Antel, Amnesty given to thousands. Together with the revocation of the ban on the BFP and the subsequent amnesty, about 6,000 people who were arrested in the 30s and 40s for the ties of the Bluish Freedom Front have now been released. 72 high-profile Bluish political prisoners or protesters who were being held up in maximum security Ansel Rock prison were also released. Cool. And from Conrad, HOS AIDS election campaign. Marcel Caronti's Heart of Sordland Advertising, the biggest advertising agency in Sordland, volunteered to help the election campaign. They will provide consulting and design work for campaign material. The agency will also produce video material for television, which will be televised extensively by the channels owned by the Heart of Sorland Media Group. Heart of Sorland Resorts will also be open to all party events and meetings during the campaign period. Okay, that's cool. I wasn't expecting uh, Karanti to actually do anything for us, but I guess we did help him take over the Heart of Sorland by getting Tusk arrested, so that makes sense. Alright, from Deer, British Freedom Party starts campaigning. The British Freedom Party uh, joined the election race immediately after being legalized. The BFP announced that Ramzo Kojak would be the party's presidential candidate. Their first rally will be held in Deer tomorrow. From Hulsort, NFP welcomes General Luderin's son. The National Front Party has welcomed General Luderin's son into the midst day in Hulsort. Seeing a Luderin back in politics is shocking to many, citizen, many citizens. General Luderin infamously organized a military coup against former President Vichy that led to the sword of civil war. Mr. Kieber has organized the event to appeal to his voter base. This is a symbolic step for the NFP, as Luderin was arguably the most well-known nationalist in Sordland. That's not dangerous at all. Cool. Alright, from Lockhaven. PFJP Richter's slogan, Victory for Everyone. As the 1957 election starts to approach, Friends Richter and the People's Freedom and Justice Party are making waves in Lockhaven. Their campaign slogan, Victory for Everyone, covered the city after campaign visit to the city. The PFJP has been the United Sorland Party's major opposition since formation, each year earning a higher percentage of votes. From Lenkirk, Lenkirk depends on fish exports to grow. Lenkirk stocks reported fishing revenues to increase by 30%. Business owners and fisheries come in the administrative push to strengthen the economy. The Lenkirk and Islands problems are not yet solved, however, as analysis shows the city is barely recovering to pre-recession levels of economic activity. And from Morbell, economic improvements fell to Morbell. The city of Morbell reported economic growth to increase by 10%. 
Locals praise the central government's efforts in reviving Warren. However, the economic potential of the city isn't fully realized. The flow of goods and materials between Holsort and Morna is one of the main factors keeping the local economy afloat. From Sarna, increased crime and racial violence plagues Sarna. The mayor of Sarna requests financial aid and additional security for Sarna. He reported a spike in racial violence and crime in the city. The lack of investment seems to intensify the economic differences between different parts of society. And from Uzran, many of the uh, celebrations in Uzran. Many of the locals in Uzran gathered at the city square to celebrate the revocation of the ban on the Belutish Freedom Party. The mayor of Uzran reported that the amnesty and the revocation were greeted by Uzraners with festivities. Dancing and city singing continued well into the nights. From Holsor, low public opinion. According to the latest polling data from the Heart of Southern Research Group, public approval for the incumbent administration sits at a low 35%. The significant portion of respondents expressing dissatisfaction indicates a challenging scenario for the current administration in the upcoming election. Yeah, that could be a problem. All right, and I think this is the last one here from Volgan, Gruny's flourishing economy. The Gruny region, with Volgan at its heart, is witnessing a major economic upswing. Projected growth rates for the next decade suggest an impressive expansion across multiple sectors, from urban development and trade to agriculture and tourism. These positive trends are the direct outcome of robust government investment and effective regional policies. Gruny is rapidly evolving into a vibrant economic hub, fostering prosperity in the east of Sorbonne. Cool. All right, then we've got a whole bunch of newspapers here as well. So there's two of them here from the whole sort post. Uncertain Alliance, Swordland aids Volgsen and Hellion invasion. Swordland has committed its resources to aid the Hellion invasion of Volgsen, a move that raises questions about the potential implications. The government's decision to support an external conflict, especially in such volatile circumstances, marks a significant shift in Sorland's foreign policy. While some consider it a stand for our allies, others view it with skepticism, uh, questioning its potential fallout on Sorland's internal stability. And President Sun at the front lines. Frank Rain, President Rain's eldest son, is reportedly to be stationed at Sorland's borders with Rumberg. The Rumberg threat has been ongoing for some time now and continues to escalate. The President's own son defending our nation is a great honor. Frank Rain is an inspiration and role model for young men and boys across the country. Cool. And there's two up from the Lockhaven Times here. So, the Alfonso Foundation expands reach to Onraka and Arcasia. In heartening development, the Alfonso Foundation has announced plans to extend its benevolent mission to Onraka and Arcasia, aiming to combat homelessness in these nations. This move reaffirms the Foundation's commitment to social upliftment, transcending borders to provide assistance where it's most needed. As the foundation expands, many look forward to seeing its positive impact on the global stage. And Red Youth and Young Swords Clash Earlier this week, there was a violent clash between the Red Youth and the Young Swords. It started with both sides protesting peacefully. Unfortunately, a Red Youth member decided to attack a Young Swords member over the death of Bernard Circus, which happened a while ago. With this incident, the peaceful protests escalated to full-on melee. As of now, there have been hundreds of injuries on both sides. Local police are trying to de-escalate de the situation to no avail. Interesting. Okay. And let's see. From the Radical, Swordish forces help Hellion. A nightmare or necessary measure? As Swordland's Navy and Air Force engage in log logistical operations and reconnaissance for the Hellion invasion, questions abound. Is our military overreaching in its roles and responsibilities, or is this a, or is this a strategic necessity for the alliance with Vogsen? The answers to these questions will undoubtedly shape the narrative of Swordland's military involvement in the region. And last up from Geopolitica, Onraka's maritime might, nuclear-powered vessels make waves. In an impressive feat of naval engineering, Onraka has unveiled its first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, accompanied by a submarine aircraft carrier housing eight planes. This formidable addition to the Navy represents a leap forward in Onraka maritime power, and the implications for regional security dynamics are significant. As Onraka bolsters its naval capabilities, its geopolitical standing is set to rise. Cool. That's definitely interesting. All right, so it looks like we also have a scheduled television interview here in Lockhaven, but I think we're going to wait on that for right now. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you all next time.